All right, next up on our tour of React Native is the concept of a scroll view. Now, I've built a very simple application here. I just started with the default um, plain thing that you get the blank application out of the box. And I've added a, a couple little things just to make it look more like a typical application. Inside my render method, I've created a variable called data. It's an object which has an array inside of it called characters. This is an array of objects. Each one of these objects has an ID, a name, and a profession. I'm going to write out the name and the profession on the screen for all these characters. I potentially don't know how long this array is going to be. Maybe this data is going to be coming from a fetch call from some API. Regardless of that, I have a whole bunch of information that I want to write out on the screen. Now, if it's a short list, I could see it all on the screen. In this case, it's a longer list than the size of the screen. But when I'm in the application, I click and I drag and nothing happens. I can't move. I know there's more content because I can see the bottom hanging off the bottom of the screen here. So I want to get to the rest of the list, but I can't get to it. And this is what happens with a typical view. So the one that you get out of the box, this view container, it is just a static element that fills up the size of the screen. It's allowed to be larger, but we can't get to the stuff that's outside that view. Now, what I'm doing to load the text is simply I'm checking to make sure that my characters array inside the data object, its length is greater than zero, and then I'm using a ternary operator. So if that's true, I'm going to call the map method and I'm going to loop through all the characters inside that array. For each character, I'm going to create this character component. And using props, I'm giving it a key, a name, and a profession. And I'm just extracting those bits of information from this array. So each one of these objects has these three properties. Now these props don't have to be the same thing. This could be a different one. This could be different as well. And if I change the names here, that means inside my character function down here. So here's character. I'm loading it from here, looping through, writing these out. The props object is being passed in here. So I can refer to props dot these names right here, name and prof. So nm, and then this one is going to be prof. That's the name of the props. So that's what I get here. It doesn't matter what it was called inside the array. These values are coming from the array. That's why we've got character in front of it. Profession is the name of the attribute. Name is the name of the attribute that we have up inside of here. And I'm going to write out those two things. Now, key. This is something that we require every time we do a map and we're looping through data and we're writing it out, we're supposed to provide a key. This is what React uses behind the scenes to keep track of each one of the elements. It needs its own reference point. So it's kind of like giving something an ID. When you're building a web page with HTML, you give it an ID. These things need to be unique. Down here, we're able to access nm and prof because those are the other ones, but key we can't get to in our code. It's used purely by React behind the scenes. So for each one of the characters, I have a view. Each view has two text fields, just styled slightly different. I gave them some style properties and wrote out the text. Okay, so we're looping through, we're writing up the data, we've got it on the screen, but we can't move, we can't get to it. So how do we change that? Scroll view, simple enough. I'm already using view down inside of here. Uh, I'm going to replace this with my scroll view, but I'm also using view here. So I don't want to remove the import because I am using it inside the character, but scroll view, this is the other container. So I've imported this and now I just have to change this one to a scroll view. Make sure you change the closing one as well. Save that scroll view. Now I can click and drag. There we go, up and down, looking at all the content. And that's it. That's really all you need to know about scroll views. It's just they let you have content that goes beyond the end of the screen so that you can slide up and down to see all that content. Now, if you get into a situation where you're loading tons and tons and tons and tons of content, you might run into some memory issues. If you've got a scroll view that's got a thousand things inside of it, it has to render all of those items so there are other ways. We're going to talk in a future video about flat lists and section lists and how we can use those 
to improve performance in our application. If you have any questions about scroll views though, feel free to leave comments down below. If you found this useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.